Hello and welcome to this short voiced over PowerPoint about seasonal survey highlights for the observatory priority pests and diseases. My name is Charles Lane. I'm a plant health consultant at Ferro Science Limited and I'm one of the plant health and biosecurity consultants for the project. Observatory is a large collaborative project led by Forest Research. It's an early warning system for tree health and we're using citizen scientists managed by the Woodland Trust to spot new pest and disease threats to the UK. There's a lot of information about the project on the website, so please visit us and find out more about what we do. Although the UK Plant Health Risk Register has identified over 1,200 different pests and pathogens, we have identified a small group of priority pests and diseases which are suitable for citizen science surveillance within the observatory project. Some of these sadly are now widely distributed like horse chestnut leaf miner, but are not occurring across the whole of the UK. Some of them have been recently introduced and spread like ash dieback, but some of them are still yet to arrive in this country like emerald ash borer. On the observatory website, you will find a large number of resources about these different priority pests and pathogens. There are field guides, posters, training videos, and there may be information, for example, about outbreaks and also links to other external resources. They're all freely available, so please go and find out more information about the priority pests and pathogens. On the observatory website, there's also the pest and disease signs and symptoms calendars. Here it has all the different priority pests and pathogens, and then looks at when you might be expected to find them across the different months. Again, you can download this for free. As we move towards autumn, we're going to be thinking about the different priority pests and pathogens that you might most likely find in the months of September, October and November. We're going to be looking at hosts such as spruce, beech, plain and a diversity of pines and conifers. Looking for pests like great spruce bark beetle, the longhorn beetles and a number of diseases like beech leaf disease, plain wilt and dothystroma needle blight. The great spruce bark beetle causes damage to spruce trees by tunneling into bark of living trees. On hatching, the developing larvae excavate feeding tunnels and galleries in the inner living bark layers. When beetle galleries completely girdle the stem, the part of the infested tree above the wound will ultimately die. This may take several years of sustained attack, with large breeding populations accumulating before individual trees are killed, creating a risk of spread to nearby trees. The great spruce bark beetle is able to infest all of the spruce species that are grown in the UK, including Sitka, Norway and Oriental spruce. Trees that are infested with great spruce bark beetle can eventually display browning and dying foliage over some or all of the crown. Dead or dying trees or trees with top death typically occur alone or in small groups, although the scale of damage can be considerably higher when other stress factors are present. Adult female beetles will tend to attack trees where sap pressure is lowest, commonly at a fork in the main stem or just below a branch node or even in callus material around a healing wound. Adult beetles also attack trees around areas of damage such as that caused by a thinning operation. Resin tubes as shown in the bottom right hand corner are characteristic. These are produced as the female, as the female beetle bores into the bark to lay her eggs causing the tree to respond by producing a strong resin flow in an attempt to protect itself. The resin tubes range in colour from creamy white to purple and brown. The presence of resin tubes accompanied by the resin bleeds are useful indicators of great spruce bark beetle. Loose bark and areas where bark has fallen away to expose beetle galleries may also be present on the stems of heavily infested trees. Attack by woodpeckers can be useful indicator of the presence of bark beetles and may contribute to the severity of the particular signs and symptoms. Beech leaf disease is a relatively newly reported problem spreading through forest areas in eastern USA and Canada. The disease was first reported on American beech in Ohio and rapidly spread to forest and landscape areas in neighboring regions. A nematode has been isolated from the symptomatic leaves and buds. As beech leaf disease is a recently described syndrome, the biology and distribution need further study to assess the potential risk of this nematode and to evaluate whether the disease is also associated with a complex of pathogens. B. 
Beach leaf disease is mainly known to affect American beach. However, symptoms have been observed on European beach and Oriental beach. The pathogenic nematode associated with beech leaf disease symptoms may be present in leaves, buds and leaf litter, although the presence of these nematodes in asymptomatic material is not unusual. However, recent studies indicate that nematode dormancy and optimal conditions may be required for successful infection and subsequent symptom development. Symptoms of beech leaf disease include dark bands forming between the veins of the leaves. This is what you can see in the middle three pictures. Leaves becoming curled, which you can see in the right-hand picture, deformed and shriveled. Premature leaf drop, aborted buds and thinning canopy. Early symptoms include dark green striped bands between lateral veins and reduced leaf size, this is clearly seen in the second from right hand picture. Banded areas usually become leathery and leaf curling may be observed. It can be quite helpful to stand underneath the canopy and look upwards as this may help you see the dark bands between the veins of the leaves. As symptoms progress, buds fail to develop. Leaf production is reduced and premature leaf drop lead to an overall reduction in canopy cover ultimately resulting in death of sapling-sized trees within five years and mature trees within 10 years. In areas where the disease has established, the proportion of symptomatic trees can reach more than 90%. However, some variability in susceptibility and symptom development has been reported. The number of nematodes present in symptomatic foliage will fluctuate throughout the year and they can overwinter in buds and fallen leaves. Similar symptoms may be caused by other native pests and pathogens, which are il illustrated in the Beech Leaf Disease Observatory Guide. Plain wilt, also known as canker stain of plain, is a serious disease of plane trees caused by the fungus Ceratocystis platanii. This disease affects the water conducting vessels of plane trees causing wilting of the leaves and staining of the wood. The disease is usually fatal, with young trees of a diameter of 30 to 40 centimetres being killed within two to three years after infection and older, more vigorous trees within four to five years. The main hosts of this pathogen are Oriental Plain, which is highly susceptible, the American Sycamore, which is relatively resistant, and their hybrid, the London Plain, which is of intermediate susceptibility. One of the main indicators of the disease is a sudden wilting of the leaves as the pathogen blocks up the water transport systems of the tree. Often the wilting initially occurs on just a single branch but becomes more extensive over time. Infected trees also tend to have a sparse, thin crown with the leaves that are discoloured and yellow. The disease also causes cankers on the bark particularly on trees with thin barks. The cankers are typically sunken lesions with orange and purple streaking around the periphery. The cankers may be difficult to see on thicker bark trees. However, vertical cracks may be visible to indicate the presence of the disease. Beneath the bark, the lesions are apparent as dark brown to violet spots of dead tissue in the inner bark. These lesions can extend to two to two and a half meters every year longitudinally. The wood may also be stained a bluish black colour in a flame-like pattern as the pathogen moves within infected branches and stems towards the inner parts of the tree. The plain lacebug, also known as the sycamore lacebug, is an insect pest of plane trees. It can reduce growth and weaken affected trees, making them more susceptible to other pests and diseases. After several consecutive years of severe infestation, Combined with other stress factors such as drought, the plain lacebug can cause mortality in plane trees, with young trees being particularly at risk. In large numbers, this pest can also cause major public nuisance problems, because it can land on people in parks, invade homes, and has even occasionally been reported to bite humans, which can result in dermatitis. The plain lacebug feeds on the foliage of plane trees causing chlorosis, the yellowing and loss of normal colour, to occur on the upper surface of the leaves. 
Lace bugs use their piercing, sucking mouth parts to rupture plant cells in order to feed on the nutritious sap within. The first sign of feeding damage is a stippling of small yellow spots on the upper leaf surface, as you can see in the right hand side, often concentrating around the leaf veins. As the lace bug populations increase, the chlorotic spots coalesce to produce large yellow and bronze colored areas on the upper leaf surface, as you can see in the left hand picture. Heavy infestations can also cause premature leaf drop. Plain lace bugs can produce two to three generations per year, and the damage they cause to their host trees increases with each new generation. Adults and juvenile stages, as well as eggs, may all be present simultaneously on the underside of affected leaves. In the right hand side picture, you can see an adult and a juvenile. The adults are recognizable because of their delicate, milky white lacy wings with variable brown markings and the juveniles because they are flattened, wingless, black, spiny and oval in shape as you can see on the left hand side of that right hand picture. The adults and juveniles attain a maximum length of 4 millimeters and 2 millimeters respectively. The eggs as you can see in the left hand picture are about half a millimeter long, elliptical and brown with a lighter colored lid and tend to be found in clusters along main leaf veins and on the underside of leaves. Lace bug deposit droplets of liquid frass onto the underside of leaves as they can feed. These dry out into hard black spots and are characteristic of lace bug infestations. Cast nymphal skins will also be visible on the underside of the leaves as you can see in the left hand picture. The Asian longhorn beetle and the citrus longhorn beetle are native to Eastern Asia and pose a serious threat to a range of our native, naturalized and introduced broadleaf trees, including many species grown as ornamentals. The climate in much of the UK is conducive to establishment and spread of these pests, whose main pathway of entrance is in wood packaging material for the Asian longhorn beetle and via the live plant trade for the citrus longhorn beetle. The larvae of the beetles feed and tunnel under the bark in the wood are both healthy and stressed trees, causing extensive damage and ultimately mortality to the infested hosts after several successive years of attack. Asian and citrus longhorn beetles spend most of their life as larvae inside the trunk, branch or root of the tree and hence there can be little or no external sign of their presence to anyone expecting a host tree until the infestation becomes very heavy. This means that in most cases the beetles have already become established by the time they are discovered and have probably spread to new hosts. The larvae tunnel and feed under the bark within the woody tissue of the tree. These tunnels, which can be up to 25 to 30 centimetres long and over 10 millimetres in diameter, disrupt the movement of water and nutrients around the tree. This results in the foliage of the infested trees becoming discoloured, yellow or red, wilting and falling prematurely and this is usually one of the first and most noticeable symptoms of to occur. Branches also start to die back and eventually the tree can die as a result of Asian and or citrus longhorn beetle infestation. The symptoms in the crown typically start at the top of the tree and progress downwards as the infestation develops. The larval galleries cannot be seen unless the bark overlying them is removed or falls off. Larval activity can also leave trees susceptible to diseases and wind damage. As the larvae tunnel and feed, they generate frass, a sawdust like waste material, which you can see at the front of the bottom left hand picture. This may be ejected from the tunnels and collecting piles at the base of the trunk or in the forks of the branches. Sometimes it may be seen actually extruding from the exit holes left by the emerging adults. The adult beetles, which you can see on the right hand side, chew their way through the bark to the outside of the tree, leaving behind an almost perfectly round exit hole, which you can see in the middle picture. Adults of Asian and citrus longhorn beetle are very similar in appearance. They are 21 to 37 millimeters long and glossy black with variable white pale yellow markings. 
Their antennae are segmented, longer than their bodies, and black with white or light blue bands. The exit holes of Asian longhorn beetle occur on the branches and mid to upper regions of the main stem, whereas those of citrus longhorn beetle occurs towards the base of the stem and on the exposed parts of the roots. Damage caused by the adults feeding on the foliage may also be visible on infested trees. The beetles often devein the leaves, leaving the majority of the lamina in place. They also strip areas of young bark from shoots as they feed, leaving a distinctive pattern of damage. A number of other abiotic and biotic factors can cause canopy thinning, crown and branch dieback, and discoloration of the foliage such as drought, waterlogging, adverse cultural and environmental conditions, and various diseases and other pests. However, the presence of the round exit holes and larval galleries under the bark are two indicators of Asian and citrus longhorn beetle, which can differentiate them from signs and symptoms of other factors. Dothystroma needle blight, also previously known as red band needle blight, is caused by the fungus Dothystroma septosporum. Dothystroma needle blight has been found on a range of conifer species, but pines are the most common hosts, with Corsican pine, lodgepole pine, and Scots pine all infected. Trees of all ages can become infected. Symptoms are first seen at the base of the crown on older needles. Infected needles typically develop yellow and tan spots and bands, which soon turn orange-red, as you can see in the far right-hand picture. As the disease progresses, the ends of the needles turn reddish-brown, while the needle bases remain green. It is within these red bands that the small, less than one millimeter, black fruit bodies containing its spores tend to be found. Symptoms are most apparent in June and July when spores are released from the fruit bodies, leading to infection of the current year's needles. At this point, the symptomatic needles are shed and the branches have a typical lion's tail appearance, with only a tuft of the recently infected current year's needles remaining at the branch ends, which you can see in the middle picture. Defoliation can continue year on year and gradually weaken the tree significantly reducing timber yields. It can also eventually lead to mortality, as you can see in the left-hand picture. So if you suspect you've seen symptoms of any of these different pests and diseases, please make sure you report these via Tree Alert. As you can see on the right-hand side, there's a link for Tree Alert. Many thanks for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you want to find out more information about Observatory, Citizen Science, priority pests and pathogens, and how to report them, please go to our website. So thank you once again.